I left you, ladies and gentlemen, with the birthplace of Liszt. Liszt, of course, a great performer, a great showman, as all musicians, in a sense, have to be. Liszt, who turned the piano sideways on. But in some forms of music making, the pianist can still be conductor. And in Salzburg, Earlier this year, I heard this glorious music. Mozart's D minor concerto, the piano entry. But before that, Daniel Barenboim had conducted the end, the uh, first part of that music, the orchestral opening, standing up with the piano facing away from the audience. He had his back to the audience and then he sat down at the last minute ready to play this opening. And I could see from where we were sitting in the audience that the stool I thought was rather high for him. And sure enough, he had, while Conducting occasionally with the left hand and playing with the right hand, he also had to adjust the stool to get it to a more comfortable height. And of course he had tails on. The, the, in the old days, when I was brought up in Edinburgh, we actually still had a mangle to put the washing through, to squeeze out the water. And tails can sometimes get caught if you're adjusting the stool, the tails can get caught in the back of it. You've got to be careful with that. So here is Baron Boy with the, one of the top world orchestras, himself perhaps the top musician of today, uh, with all these little problems. <laughs> the next morning I offered him another problem without realising it. We were walking as a group through the streets of Salzburg and somebody pointed, one of my group pointed, uh, just said to me, look, there's a very famous person just on your left. And it wasn't till I had a careful look that I suddenly saw it was Daniel Barenboim in a nice tweed jacket, off duty, with his agent walking through the city. And we crossed the uh, first set of traffic lights by the Zachertel and then over what is called the Lover's Bridge. And I thought, this is ridiculous, I have met him before, I've been introduced to him by Clifford Curzon, no less, in the Festival Hall in London. And uh, I corresponded with him about his late wife, Jacqueline Dupre's uh, competition, cello competition, which I helped to inaugurate. So by the time we got to the second set of traffic lights, I thought, come on, I'm going to have a little word with him. So I'm, I, I said how much we'd enjoyed the Mozart concerto. And the two of us just set off walking as musicians do and didn't realise that the traffic could still flow in front of us. The red light hadn't gone away. And suddenly he realised this and grabbed me by the arm and pulled me back. So I found myself saying, um, we mustn't die together on, on a traffic crossing. And he said, neither together nor separately. <laughs> and with that, then we, it was a green light for us to move forward. And we talked more about the Mozart concerto and so on. Very gracious he was. So we have the stool problem for everybody even at that level in the musical profession. But you have to even get onto the platform before you have sat down on the stool. And it depends on all sorts of things. In one venue in Oxford, I remember the platform entrance was extremely narrow and I used to be a very slim person, but even I had to go sideways onto the platform. Or another time in Pitlochry Festival Theatre, I was playing there with two lovely singers and I remember walking just backwards in the darkness of the wings and suddenly the floor level changed and the dangers, you never know what's going to happen. So being on a platform is, is full of fun and my final platform story at the minute is going onto it up a set of steps, especially when you perhaps had a, a lovely concert. We had a trio concert, this was in, the, in Bridport in Dorset and there was a violinist first and the, the cellist in a lovely long purple dress, I always remember, and I was behind somebody, behind her, going back onto the platform, 
the person in front of me was in a bit of a hurry, stood on the train of the cellist dress and we heard this awful <coughs> as a tear in her dress appeared and she was not happy. So there we are. Then the great excitement for me is to go to composers' houses and play there. As I said, Liszt was one of the first I played in. I played also in Heiligenstadt in Beethoven, where Beethoven had this terrible crisis in his life because of his ensuing deafness. And I remember playing this piece. <laughs> Tempest Sonata gives forth. And I remember feeling ill at ease. It wasn't because I was worried about playing this piece. It was, the, it was extraordinary. The atmosphere seemed highly charged within that room where Beethoven had gone through so much and come through at the other end, realising his art needed him to stay alive in spite of his poor old ears. Another time I was on a ship in Bergen and because I was a visiting musician we were also called supernumerary crew and that meant you had to go through lifeboat drills and I remember lovely morning beautiful sunny morning and here was me in the shadow of the ship next to a Russian engineer waiting to be drilled in how to deal with the lifeboats and the passengers had gone off guess where to Grieg's house, and I would have given anything to be with them. Well, after about half an hour, this life war drill was over, and I managed to get in a taxi and go to Grieg's house. And I was determined to play the piano. I brought this wonderful waltz. <laughs> Outside the room where Grieg, I could see his Steinway piano sitting in this great sitting room. And I said to a very beautiful Norwegian girl in national costume, I'm a professional pianist, may I come and play his piano? No. So I went round to another entrance to the room. There were three sides to this room that were open to the public. And another beautiful Norwegian girl was there. Same question, same answer. Well, the third view of the room, there was a more mature lady and I asked the question. She didn't give me an answer. She lifted the rope and there I went, flung off my raincoat and played the rest of this piece.
Do you know, it was extraordinary. It was a beautiful toned Steinway. I felt greed was there. And I'm not normally that sort of person. I really felt he was there. Beautiful. Other houses, of course, I'm privileged to visit and play in regularly is Mendelssohn's. In a funny way, you, I find I don't think about it too much. Otherwise, one would be perhaps slightly overwhelmed by the feeling of the composer present. But you want to feel that in the right way. And, of course, also in Schumann's house, the house that the Schumanns lived in, also in Leipzig, uh, where they were first married. It was very beautiful. And this lovely romance of, of Schumann that he wrote to Clara before they were able to be married, to keep her with him. same composer Schumann had played to Clara when she was just a little girl. she wrote 1835 they got married in 1840 there was one little piece called La Veux, the vow which they came together and it did work through here's the vow La Veux. <laughs> One of the most enjoyable composers to have met from a, genial, in, from a genial point of view was Haydn. And several times I went into his house with a group, his various houses, and it was a very cheerful prospect. He was one of the most well-balanced of all the composers, I feel. And one of the most adventurous, too. He also died in Eisenstadt where we had visited for a festival and we sang as a group around his grave and we sang the famous Austrian hymn which he had composed. We sang it also outside one of his houses in Vienna and we weren't arrested. In fact when we sang it around his grave People loved it because we did it rather well. And I 
was given words by somebody and so I'm going to sing some of them because it's a well, rather well written. God who gives the sound of music calls forth words from human time. Then the joy and power of chorus, beauty, truth together find. Here in Eisenstadt came Haydn, lifting hearts from wall to wall. So we share his vision glorious as we sing with voice and soul. Well, that was a very splendid occasion, one of many still to come.